Welcome everyone, Farmer Cop here. This is gonna be a guide on how to grow grain style crops in Farming Center 22. So the crops we're gonna to cover today uh, is wheat, barley, oats, canola, soy, and sorghum. And we're gonna cover how to grow them with seasons and without seasons. So the first, very first step in that is to, well, you have to own a field. So if we go into the menu here, you can purchase land by doing this and then selecting what you wanna buy. If you need to know more details on that, I have a video on purchasing land out that is separate. Now, the first step in getting crops and getting these crops grown is field preparation. So uh, make sure the field has either been cultivated or plowed. Um, so you either have to do one of those two things or you have to use a direct drill seeder, which we'll talk about a little bit more as we get into seeders and planting the crops here. So uh, I'm using this field, I'm cultivating it. I'm gonna use a regular seeder, but we'll talk about direct drills. Um, so that's the first step is you have to get everything prepped. And if you wanna know more about the different aspects of field prep and what I mean by that is simply all the different things that there is like subsoil or spaders, power harrows, disc harrows, plows, cultivators, mulchers, um, all of those different kind of types of items that can all do field prep for you. Um, you should check out my field prep test video that will kind of help you out a little bit with those. Now, another thing to note, if we go into our menu here, and we scroll over to this screen right here. There's all these different items on here. So during field prep, we wanna make sure plowing this red state is not on our field. Though it's our field, it doesn't say plowing on it. Now you don't have to worry about this if you're playing, if we go down to our settings, if you're playing with periodic plowing turned off, if you have that on off, you don't have to worry about this, but if it isn't on, you need to make sure up here on the map that this is not highlighted red. If it is highlighted red, then you'll need to, or you will lose 15% of your harvest. It causes a 15% deficit to your harvest. So you wanna make sure you take care of that. So um, no need to do this step though, if plowing is not needed and you have a direct drill seeder. The direct drill seeder will not take care of the plowing state. You have to use a plow or a spader or something along those lines or a subsoiler to take care of that plowing state. And again, more will come on that uh, as we continue going here. So that is the, the first step to the process. So right now I have a tractor currently cultivating this field. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get our seeder set up here in a minute after this guy's done cultivating and then we're gonna get some crops put in the ground here. So I'll bring you guys back in then. All right, so before we talk about the seeder in front of us, the one last thing I wanna mention here as far as field prep goes, and you can do this at different points, is lime in the field. So if lime is required, is turned on, you must apply lime using a lime spreader, which is found in the store. If we go under our fertilizer spreaders, you wanna look for one that has this lime symbol at the bottom. So this one would not have it. This one does not have it. This one has it. This one has it. So a couple in there. So just be aware of that. Um, that would be how you would spread lime. Now, if we go into the actual map here, how do you know if you need it? Well, we talked about plowing. So if we talk about lime here, this is what the liming state looks like. But as you can see, our field doesn't need it. So we're not gonna spread any on there before we seed. But if you are playing with it turned on, which is down here in the settings, I go down here to uh, periodic plowing required about, we talked about that. So lime required on, if you have that on, you need to lime every three harvests, or excuse me, you need to lime if it has it required. Uh, so you don't have a 15% deficit essentially, uh, because it will give a 50% bonus if you have the lime turned or have the lime on the, on the uh, field there. So just be aware of that. Now, uh, unlike an FS19 and FS22, you don't have to lime every three harvests. You only have to lime after a specific crop such as corn, sugar beets, potatoes, stuff like that. None of the crops that we're gonna talk about today require lime after every harvest. So just something to note as far as that goes. Uh, but yeah, so lime required that is turned on here. Now, talking about the seeder and getting stuff seeded and planted. So first you need to buy a seeder or lease it for that matter. And those can be found under seeders. Make sure you have one that has these crop types down here. So we see wheat, barley, oats, canola, soy, and at the end, sorghum, which are the ones we're talking about here. Um, now, if we go over here to planters, these ones are not gonna plant the required crop types that we're looking at today. They will plant soy, so just note that you can use them for soy, but in general, they're not gonna plant everything, so just be aware of that. So cedars, they're gonna deal with the crops that we're gonna talk about primar primarily today. Now, there's a couple things to think about. Again, if we uh, look at direct real cedars like this one, it'll say this at the top. Additionally, this cedar offers the possibility to seed directly, no previous cultivating or plowing is required. So if it says that, you don't have to do the field prep step, which we already kind of talked about. Now, that is how you get all that stuff taken care of. Now, another thing to note too, um, we are gonna talk about fertilizer and fertilizing our fields later on. Something to note with cedars is if you purchase a cedar that has this fertilizer icon in addition to the seed icon, um, it will also be able to put down a layer of fertilizer for you on your field. Um, so that is something to note as well and think about as we move forward here. So just something to think about. Um, so you are gonna need to fill the cedar with seeds. Where do you buy seeds? Go over here to the left side, go to objects. Um, there's a couple ways to buy it. There's big bags of seeds here. Um, there also are big bags of seeds in here, which is a little bit cheaper than the other big bag. And then under pallets, we also have a pallet of seeds right down here at the end. You just wanna purchase those in the store. Um, those will cover all the crop types. So I have a cedar here. This is not a direct drill. We hop in, 
Right next to us here, if we open that help menu up in the upper left hand corner, you can see R to refill the cedar. The key will be different on consoles, but this is exactly how you do it. So down in the bottom right hand corner, you can see it has the wheat icon there in 0%. So I'm going to hit R to fill and it's going to start taking seed off of that pallet. And there we go, it's going to fill up and I'm not close enough to that other one. So if I get a little closer, the R will come up again and I'll fill it up. We don't need to fill it all the way, we're just going to get it filled up here. Now another thing to note, you don't actually have to buy seed if you don't want to, if you want to hire a worker. Um, worker refill down here in the menu options. Um, they can refill seeds, fertilizer, fuel, slurry, manure, whatever you want automatically if you hire them. However, be aware they do charge you more than what you're going to pay in the store if they do it automatically. Uh, and FS19 is one and a half or is uh, 1.5 times as much. I haven't tested that in this one. Now, another thing to note, uh, as we drive this over here, down in the bottom right-hand corner, it shows wheat down there. We don't want to plant necessarily only wheat. So how do we change that? Well, in the upper left-hand corner, you can see the Y button, which says select seed, which is currently on wheat. So if I hit Y, I can go to barley, oats, canola, soybeans, oilseed radish, grass, and back to sorghum there, and then, oh, sorry, then sorghum, then back to wheat. So that is the different crop types this can plant. We're gonna focus on, again, the wheat, barley, oats, canola, uh, some or sorry, excuse me, wheat, barley, oats, canola, uh, soybeans, and sorghum on this tutorial here. So now in order to use this, I have to unfold it. So I'm gonna hit X to unfold it. Most seeders require that. It'll let you know in the upper left-hand corner with the help menu on. And another thing to note, if you wanted to get these seeds out of here, let's say you leased this for as part of a contract or something that, like that, you can hit I to unload it and it'll unload the seeds to the side uh, of it here. So now that we have that done, I can hit V to lower it, V to turn it on, and now we are currently seeding. So now as I drive over the field here, you can see the texture is changing. We are seeding wheat. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put probably um, I think just a row of each of the crops that we're gonna look at here. So I'll put a row of wheat, then barley, then oats, um, and so on and so forth until we get this done. But as far as seeding goes, um, this is everything we know as far as getting the seeding planting done. Now, one thing to note as well, if you are playing with seasons on, which we are not, but if I was to go in here and turn seasonal growth to yes, um, up here, this crop calendar will appear and I need to make sure I'm planting in the appropriate window, which now is not the appropriate time. So for wheat, you plant September, October, and then for barley, it would be September, October, canola, August, September. Um, oats, March, April, corn, um, and so on. There's all the different ones. Soybeans are right here, so April, May. So make sure you plant the appropriate one. Um, always it'll do this for you, which it's saying that I can't plant it, so it's not actually doing anything right now. But just be aware of that. So I'm gonna turn seasons off, I'm gonna finish planting, and I'll bring you guys back in. All right, now that the seeding is done, if we look into our growth menu here, which we'll go over to it, Right here, this is a menu we need to pay attention to. So you can see if we zoom in on our field here that we're working on, if I actually can get my mouse to let me zoom in here. Um, we have six rows of crops. We have wheat, barley, oats, canola, soy, and sorghum. So they're gonna be in this growing state, which will get darker and darker as they get closer to ready to harvest. Now, how long does it take them to be ready to harvest? Well, it depends on the crop. If you're playing with seasons turned off, it'll take wheat seven months. It will take barley six months. Now, if you have days turned down to one, or you have months turned down to one day per month, um, then that'll only be seven or six days. Uh, oats are gonna take four. Canola is gonna take eight. Sorghum is going to take um, four. And then lastly, soy is gonna take six right there. So uh, those are the different growth times. Now, if you're playing with seasons on, which if I go down to our uh, options down here and I turn this back to on by the way make sure this isn't at pause or your crops will not grow turn that back to one or excuse me to yes and then days per month again that's at one there if i go back up our crop calendar being here again you want to harvest these crops once they get to um, the harvest window you can see harvest season down there so that'll take so if you plant them here it'll take all the way around to july or august to harvest so just something to be aware of you want to harvest when um, the appropriate month is out there now if you wait during seasons until after that time your crops will likely wither so just be aware of that but yeah this will kind of give you a guide as far as when to plant and when to harvest if you're playing with seasons but again we're going to continue this with seasonal growth set to no so there you go now the next thing we need to talk about and you can excuse me you can skip this if you don't have weeds turned on um we're going to talk about weeds here so if we have weeds turned on which are down here we have uh, weeds turned on which i'm actually going to flip them off just so i don't have to worry about it so the crops look nice uh, but um, if you have weeds turned to on when weeds appear in your field if they appear in your field there's different conditions where they may or may not appear in your field but if they do appear in your field you will see if we go into our menu here back over to this you'll see pink show up so like for example we turn everything else off these fields have weeds in them because they have the pink icon on it or over it um, so if that's the case, there's a couple things you can do to get rid of them. Otherwise, you will get a 15% uh, yield deficit, or excuse me, a 20% yield deficit um, for weeds. So if you catch the weeds early on in their early growth stages, um, we can go into here and we can use a mechanical weeder, which is under here. One of these guys, you can go over the field while the weeds are in their earliest growth state. 
and you can remove them without the use of any chemicals. But if they do get to a further growth state, you're gonna to need to use a uh, sprayer. So either if we go under here to sprayers, we have uh, these guys right here, which will have the herbicide icon down here at the bottom. These will also spray liquid fertilizer, but the herbicide is what we're worried about here. Or you can use a self-propelled sprayer under here um, that'll also spray uh, herbicide. And then you'd have to spray the field to kill the weeds. And then um, that will take care of the weeding issue. So I'm not gonna go into all the details on weeds and everything like that. Um, this is not a tutorial on weeds, it's a tutorial on grains. So we'll cover all that stuff in a yield video later on but in order to make sure you get the best yield if you're playing with weeds turned on you need to make sure you take care of the weeds now the next step we need to talk about is fertilizing which these fields actually right now if we turn the fertilization on it is fully fertilized so you can see this lighter blue is state one and this darker blue is state two there's only two states of fertilizer so this field's actually fully fertilized so we don't have to do anything but you need to either fertilize using the cedar like we talked about um, or use solid uh, manure uh, or excuse me use solid solid fertilizer, liquid fertilizer, manure, or slurry. So um, just note that you can double apply the slurry and the manure. It'll use twice as much, but you only have to go over the field once and it'll give you two fertilizer states is what that double apply means. Now, if you apply two states of fertilizer, that will give you a total of 23% bonus per fertilizer state. So 46% total, 23% per state. So just be aware of that. Now, in general, what you'll do is after you plant like this, as long as your cedar didn't apply fertilizer, you can immediately apply fertilizer over top of this or a different type of fertilizer over top of this. Um, and after you fertilize it, you'll see the fertilizer state jump up to the next state and then just wait another day or two or whatever the case may be. Wait until it goes into the next growth state. So if we go over to, again, our growth states here, once each of these gets a slightly darker shade of green, you can then throw on another layer of fertilizer. Now, if you are playing with crop destruction on, be careful because you will destroy the crops as they um, get more mature. Now, in the earlier states, you won't destroy them when you drive over them. Otherwise, you have to use narrow wheels. So we'll talk about that here briefly. So again, if we go down here, uh, if we go down to these guys right here, where are they at? Crop destruction. If this is turned on, you will destroy the crops by driving over them with wide tires. Now, you can use narrow tires, which some vehicles have the option for that. So let's find one that does here. Um, I believe this guy, this one, have one wheel setup, standard, wide, wides, narrow. So there you go. If you have it set to narrows, if this says narrow tires, it should not destroy crops. I haven't tested it all, but it should not destroy crops if it's anything like the previous iterations of the game. So uh, just be aware of that. You're going to want to use narrow tires if you're going to uh, use a sprayer or fertilizer spreader uh, doing that. So that's one thing to note there. Now, the final thing we need to do is wait for this stuff to be ready to harvest, which ours will be ready to harvest at different times. Um, if you want to see the different states as these guys grow up, please check out my growth test video. That'll kind of show you those options but I'm just going to wait till they're all ready. They do take different amounts of time, as I mentioned, but I'm going to wait until they're all ready to harvest, and then I'll bring you guys back in to talk about the harvesting step. All right, and our crops are ready to harvest. So we have sorghum here ready to harvest. We have our soybeans ready to harvest. Canola. We have our oats. We have our barley. And then finally, we have our wheat. So we're going to need a harvester like this one here. So if I hop in this guy, we'll talk about this. So we need a harvester with a grain header. So if we talk about that in the store here, um, you can use any harvester in here. Any harvester in here will work because if you look down here, they have those crop types that we're looking for for harvesting. Uh, the one we're going to use is the X9, but we have wheat, barley, oats, canola, sorghum, soy on there as well. So it does have sunflower and corn on there. Um, note that you have to use a different header. Now, the easiest way to find a header that's designed for your harvesters, if we click any of these harvesters, let's say we click... Um, Let's go back to one of the smaller ones here. If we just click this New Holland here, down here at the bottom, you can click combinations and it shows you the headers that are designed to work with it. So again, for our purposes, we need a header that's this style here, this grain style header, which we go back to the store menu here. That is gonna be found under headers, not corn headers. So check headers. And then most of these will work. Make sure at the bottom, again, it has the crop types we're looking for. Not these guys here. These are helianthus headers. They're designed for sunflowers. It's not a helianthus header you're looking for. Any of these guys will work. Um, so just be aware of that. That is what we're looking for as far as harvesting goes. So once we have that set up here, um, if we open up our help menu, up there it says fold harvester. We have it unfolded right now, so we're not gonna fold it back up, but you'll normally have to unfold it when you first buy it. Um, so be aware of that. You can hire a worker to do this. B is to turn it on, so if you hit B, it'll turn it on and get it down there. Now the one last thing I wanna talk about on the left side, we talked about straw. So wheat, barley, and oats give you the option for a straw swath. So over on the left-hand side, there's the comma button, which will enable the straw swath, which I'm going to enable it right now. So if I drive forward and start harvesting the wheat here, uh, we'll take a look at what the straw swath, and you can see bottom right-hand corner, we're getting wheat in our harvester. But there's what the straw swath looks like, and you can bail that or collect that in order to make additional cash. Now, if I wanted to turn that off, I can hit the disable straw swath button. 
and now it's not producing a straw swath. It's trapping the straw on the back end of the field there. So uh, just something to be aware of. Um, it doesn't matter. You can always cultivate in straw that you're not going to use or whatever the case may be. But that is how harvesting goes. Now, if you wanted to unload this harvester, um, I can hit O to put the pipe out right here. And then all you have to do is pull a trailer under this pipe that can actually hold this grain type. So we have wheat here, so any trailer under here should be able to hold it. Look down at the bottom again to make sure the icons match up. Um, so that's how you harvest and get all that done. So and again, make sure it's in the harvest season if you're playing with seasons on, but otherwise you're good to go. Now, if you're harvesting soy, canola, or sorghum, you're not gonna have the option for a straw swath. So just something to be aware of as well. Again, only have it for wheat, barley, and oats. Now, what do you do with your harvest after you have it? What do you do with the crops you produce? Well, you can use them in production chains, which there are ways to do that. So if we have uh, sorghum, oats, barley, and wheat, we can take that to the grain mill to produce flour and sell it further on. Now, if we have canola, we can use that at the oil mill to produce oil. Now, sorghum can, uh, or excuse me, not sorghum, oats can also be used at the cereal factory to make cereal, uh, so be aware of that. Uh, but yeah, those are in general just a few things you can do with the crops other than sell them. So again, you can sell them. If we go into the menu here, we look over here, we'll take a look at crops that say wheat, for example. It'll show us various places that are, are taking wheat right now um, and are buying wheat for those prices. Now, if we hit show price fluctuations, um, we can see that depending on the month, the prices may change. This white line is where the prices are supposed to be at or raise up to. It's just in general, I don't know of any specific amounts related to these, but for example, if we were in August right now, we'd know that if we waited till January, we're gonna get our best prices for wheat. So just something to be aware of as far as the price fluctuations go. That's kind of what they're indicating there. But yeah, you can sell it to make money or you can uh, produce it further on or bring it further on a production chain to make more money off of a uh, more intense crop or more intense product that you can produce with it. So anyhow, guys, hopefully that answers a lot of your general questions about grains. If you guys enjoyed this video, please drop a like down below. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button up on the screen to join the Farmer Cop channel and turn on your notification bell so you don't miss any future videos I may post. This has been Farmer Cop. Thank you guys for coming and watching.